The top stories tonight and why news. Thousands of crowds attended President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr.'s inaugural address as he promises to focus on food security, education and improving COVID-19 response. Former President Rodrigo Duterte skips his successor's inauguration ceremony as he begins his journey as a citizen. The World Health Organization says sustained transmission of the monkeypox virus worldwide could see the virus more into high-risk groups. And South Korea approves its own domestically developed COVID-19 vaccine. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, June 30, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Herdin Delgado. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts. I am William Theo. First in the news. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. was sworn into office as the Philippines' 17th president. The Marcos administration promised would build on his campaign message of unity over the next six years of his term. Nel Maribohok found this report. Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. delivered his first address to the nation as president, promising reforms that will benefit all Filipinos. In his inaugural address, which lasted about 20 minutes, President Marcos Jr. committed to working on the country's economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. We are presently drawing up a comprehensive, all-inclusive plan for economic transformation. We will build back better by doing things in the light of the experiences that we have had, both good and bad. Marcos, who will lead the Agriculture Department for the time being, discussed his administration's priorities, including food and infrastructure. Food sufficiency must get the preferential treatment the richest free trade countries always gave their agricultural sectors. Their policy boils down to don't do as we do, do what we tell you to. I am giving that policy the most serious thought if it doesn't change or make more allowances for emergencies with long-term effects. I will complete on schedule the projects that have been started. I'm not interested in taking credit. I want to build on success that's already happening. He also emphasized the importance of reorienting students on fundamental education. What we teach in our schools, the materials used, must be rethought. I am not talking about history. I am talking about the basics, the sciences, sharpening theoretical aptitude and imparting vocational skills, such as in the German example. The new chief executive promised to perform better at handling the COVID-19 pandemic. There were shortcomings in the COVID response. We will fix them out in the open. No more secrets in public health. Even with the challenges, the president said he is confident in the country's future. Believe, have hope. The sun also rises like it did today and as it will tomorrow. And as surely as that, we will achieve the country all Filipinos deserve. Nel Maribohok, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. says strong economic recovery depends on partnership and alliances. Meanwhile, the newly inaugurated president's cabinet secretaries have officially taken their oath of office. Rosalie Claus reports. The countries and their governments were thanked by President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. for their support and partnership with the Philippines. He made the statement right after his inauguration during the Van de Noor. He added that he believes recovery from the pandemic requires partnership and alliance. It will be those partnerships that will strengthen that recovery, that will make a more balanced and stable new global environment for us to work in. 
the newly elected president intended to strengthen the Philippines' relationship with other countries. Several diplomatic corps members paid a courtesy call to President BBM at the National Museum. Meanwhile, President BBM has facilitated the oath-taking of his cabinet secretary's designate as well as other government officials in the palace. I suppose this is uh, uh, the first act of actual work that we will be doing for uh, this administration. So uh, let's get the official part done uh, so that uh, we can get on with the job. Despite his formal inauguration, PBBM has yet to appoint secretaries in several key departments, including health, foreign affairs, the environment, science and technology, and energy. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Fallen supporters of President Bongbo Marcos turned emotional after personally hearing his historic inaugural address. They also expressed hope for the new president. This report will tell us why. Supporters of President Bongbo Marcos queued early outside the club in Tramuras Golf Course to witness the inaugural ceremony. Some of them traveled for hours, just like Amelia de la Cruz of Dasmarinas City, Cavite. Ay, baka si pagka nakita mo siya na dito na personal. Saka talagang paborito namin yan, mga Marcoses. Taka, at doon pa sa nanay ko, loyalista nanay ko, talagang ano na kami, sumusuporta talaga kami dyan sa Marcos. Indigenous peoples or IP groups were among those who attended the inauguration. The Ilongapo Federation of Aita's hopes Marcos will help them in protecting their rights and ancestral lands and providing scholarships for their children. Ang ini-expect ko po, madam, uh, tawag dito na kumatugon sana yung aming kahilingan tungkol po doon sa ancestral domain namin na magkaroon na sana ng katuparan yung certificate of ancestral domain para ano uh, mga project ng ating galing local o national, hindi na kami gagambalain po ng mga, mga kapatirang lowlanders. Others could not help but shed tears as Marcos takes his oath as the country's next president. Some of his supporters say they are satisfied with his message after the Dewis chief executive delivered his address. Sana lahat matupad yun. Lahat. Sana maging maganda. Nakakaya. Masaya na ang super happy. Ako talagang nangilabot ako. Pati yung, yung aking vote kumayo sa... Ewan ko, hindi ko maintindihan, hindi ko ma-explain. There were also Ilocos residents who traveled to Manila to personally witness the oath-taking of their fellow Ilocano. They hope that Marcos will address pressing issues in the country such as agriculture problems and poverty. Sabi niya na ang mga pangarap niyo ay pangarap ko rin at sana matutupad, matutupad yun kung tayo ay magkakaisa. Congratulations to our new elected president, Bongbong uh, Bong Marcos. Uh, God bless you always. Na makapanindig palahibo ah, at saka nakakaiyak. Very touching. Ah. Sana lahat ng pangarap ni Bongbong Bong Marcos sa ating lahat ay matupad. O, yung speech niya kanina, hindi lang sa pagkakaisa, kundi kung ano yung mga pangarap ng mga tao, susubukan niyang gawin. So sabi niya ganoon, Ah, uh, tulungan tulungan natin siya para makamit natin ang tagumpay bilang pagkakaisa. Uh, hopefully, hopefully na lahat ng mga pangarap ni President Marcos at sambayan ng Pilipino matutupad. Some younger BBM supporters also approved the message of the president. Ganda ng mga sinabi niya kahit yung iba hindi ko totally naintindihan. Pero may mga ano siya, may may point siya na gustong patunayan sa ano sa mga susunod na taon, masasabi ko na satisfied ako at yung mga pinangawa niya sana hindi mapaw at mapatunay ang pagdating ng mga susunod na taon. Maganda naman yung mga uh, points niya. Nakita naman namin na may plano siya talaga for the Philippines. And we are hoping for the best talaga under his leadership. Okay lang naman yung kanyang English. Siyempre may mga bisita. Ang comment ko lang kanina, sana gumamit siya ng Uh, Tagalog din o kahit Taglish para mas maintindihan ng mga uh, kababayan po natin. As President Marcos officially assumes office, his supporters are in high hopes that he will be true to his promises. 
Jorge Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine National Police described the inauguration of President Bongbong Marcos Jr. today at the National Museum in Manila as orderly and peaceful. Police Major General Valeriano De Leon, PNP Director for Operations, lauded the hard work of the PNP personnel, soldiers, and other enforcers from various government agencies for their contribution in a successful inauguration. De Leon said there was no reported significant at the span of the ceremony. More than 5,000 supporters trooped to the Intramuros Golf Course to personally witness the inauguration of President Bongbong Marcos. De Leon also said that even the protests outside the venue were also relatively peaceful. Around 1,000 people held the protest in Plaza Miranda in Quiapo, Manila. And for the news abroad, the World Health Organization, or WHO, warns that an increase in the number of the monkeypox cases may see the virus move into high-risk groups. Marvid Finn will tell us why live. Yes, Marvi. Marielle, WHO Chief Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said in an online briefing on Wednesday that the monkeypox virus has been identified in more than 50 new countries, with the trend likely to continue. I'm concerned about sustained transmission because it would suggest that the virus is establishing itself and it could move into high-risk groups, including children the immunocompromised and pregnant women. The United Nations Agency is currently investigating reports of infected children, including two in Britain and unconfirmed numbers in France and Spain, even though none of the cases in children have been severe. There have been more than 3,400 monkeypox cases and one death since the outbreak started in May, with more than 1,500 cases and 66 deaths this year in countries where it usually spreads. Executive Director of the W. WHO emergencies program, Mike Ryan stated that they are working on a mechanism to distribute vaccines more equitably, following statements from countries including Britain and the United States, expressing their willingness to share stockpiled smallpox vaccine. Marielle? Thank you, Marva Delfin, reporting live. South Korea approves its own domestically developed COVID-19 Sky COVID-1 vaccine. Nerissa Dando will tell us the details live. Yes, Nerissa, please go ahead. Good evening, Marielle. Health officials in South Korea green-lighted Wednesday their own domestically developed coronavirus shot for people 18 years old and above. SkyCovion is more effective than AstraZeneca shots in building immunity against infections. This is based on the results of the clinical trials involving some 4,000 participants in South Korea and five other countries. The formulation of the protein vaccine SkyCovion is similar to the shots used for years against the common flu and hepatitis B, which means it's not designed for the more transmissible Omicron variant that placed South Korea in tight coronavirus measures earlier this year. Health officials say SkyCovion could appeal to people who are hesitant to use vaccines developed with newer technologies. Meanwhile, Sky Bioscience, who developed the shots, is seeking an approval from the World Health Organization for export opportunities of SkyCovion vaccine. Marielle? Thank you, Nerissa Dando, for that live report. Meanwhile, the Department of Health and Human Services, or HHS, in the United States has announced a new contract with Pfizer and its partner, BioNTech. 
The companies have agreed to supply 105 million doses of their COVID-19 vaccines at an initial cost of $3.2 billion, with the U.S. government having the option to purchase an additional 195 million doses as part of the contract for a total of 300 million potential doses. HHS Secretary Javier Becerra stated that the Biden-Harris administration is committed to making vaccines free and available to Americans in the future. The recently purchased doses will be delivered in the fourth quarter of this year. The country has administered over 350 million doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine since 2020, according to the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Thailand scientists have documented the first case of COVID-19 transmission from cat to human, adding felines to the list of animals that can transmit virus to people. Ruth Bahe will tell us why live. Yes, Ruth, go ahead. Yes, Marielle, Thailand's Prince of Songkla University scientists wrote a study on how the feline finding came to be by accident, which was published in the Emerging Infectious Diseases Journal. The timeline of the suspected infection shows the vet had tested positive for COVID-19 with the same variant and identical genomic sequences as the cat and its two owners in August 2021. The cat sneezed in the face of the veterinary surgeon who was wearing a protective mask and gloves but no eye protection. Earlier pandemic research has shown that cats shed infectious virus particles and can infect other cats, but this is the first documented case of cat-to-human transmission. The Thai study is an interesting case report and a great example of what good contact tracing can do, says Marion Kupsman, a virologist at the Erasmus University Medical Center in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Although they have provided evidence that cats can transmit the COVID infection to humans, the transmission are probably rare and do not play a significant part in spreading the virus yet. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Ruth Bahe, reporting live. We'll tell you more global stories later, but for now, back to you, William. Thank you, Marielle. Several anti-Marcos groups flooded the Plaza Miranda this morning during the inauguration of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. The militant groups presented their request to the new administration. Dante Amento has the story. Militant groups appealed to lower the prices of oil products and basic commodities during President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s inauguration this morning. They met at the Plaza Miranda to perform their program. Their battle cry is for equal treatment in society between rich and poor. Ang excess tax sa yes, at ang ibat ang nagpatindi kung bakit bayat maya ang pagtaas ng presyo ng mga pango na hing bilhin. Na sa amin sector ay matindi ang epekto dahil na. They also ask the new administration to increase teacher's salary and double the education department's budget, allow press freedom, justice for all human rights victims, war on drugs, and abolish the government's NTF-LCAC or the task force against communists. They assure the public of continuous protest rallying against alleged government abuses. Si Marcos po, ayaw niya kilalanin yung mga abuso ng nakaraan. Kapag hindi niya kinikilala ang mga abuso ng nakaraan, ibig sabihin niya, malamang mauulit niya yung mga abuso ng nakaraan. Kaya mauulit ang nakawan, mauulit ang paglabag sa karapatang pantao, mauulit ang monopolyo ng kapangyarihan ng iinan. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Filipinos expect Pres President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. to perform well in office. 
They wish that the president will address the country's economic concerns. JP Nunez explains why. Filipinos on eateries, public terminals, and even on their houses awaited early in the morning for the inauguration of President Bongbong Marcos Jr. to witness his oath-taking speech. To some Filipinos, President Bongbong Marcos Jr.'s inauguration was historical. Eh, siyempre, historical yan eh. Historical eh. Saka, hindi na makauulit yan, bihira yan, yung ganyan ano. Inauguration. Yung pagkapanalo niya ng 31 million, di ba? Siya pinaka, ano eh, pinaka maraming boto na nakakuha eh, ever since. The public expects the new president to have economic growth plans. Yung sinabi niyang uh, ang pangarap niyo ay pangarap ko. Sana matupad ang mga pangarap ng mga bawat mamamayang. Ang pangarap ko ay... Mapaunlad ang Pilipinas. Ah, yung ang pinaka-battle cry niya, yung pangarap nyo, pangarap ko rin. Tsaka gusto ko yung sinabi niya na hindi na kailangan tignan pa yung nakaraan. Yung kasalukuyan at yung hinaharap ang tinitignan niya. Yung mga pagbabago na gusto niyang ipatupad sa ekonomiya, sa larangan ng uh, infrastruktura, sa gobyerno, ang pangarap ko lang siguro yung magkaisa-isa. Kasi tapos na eleksyon eh. Dapat nandun na tayo may bago ng Pangulo. Doon tayo, magsama-sama tayo para maiangat naman natin yung bansa natin. Siguro gaganda na ekonomiya. Yung ano natin, pamumuhay ng Pilipino. Sana matupad yung mga pinangako niya. Others believe that President Marcos Jr. will address the continuing increase in basic commodities prices. Among other things, they believe that this issue is driving the country into poverty as more Filipinos are unable to meet their basic needs. Mataas ang ano, ilaw, tubig, yung mga isda, ano, yung mga gulay, mga manok, baboy, sobrang taas. Hindi namin kaya ang mga ganun bilhin. Gusto namin bumaba ng konti para maka, lahat ng ano bilhin, mabibili. Eh kaganya, asukal, mataas din. Mantika, lahat ng bagay mataas. Gusto namin ma, ano, ni Bongbong Marcos na ibaba yung ano, mga bilhin. Tricycle drivers who have suffered from continued oil price increase expect PBBM to impose a program to reduce prices of petroleum products or the government to provide them with an equitable subsidy. Isa na siya hinahing, yung gas po, diesel, gasolina, number one po na, 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 na hirapan, lubos po na hirapan sa kanilang pamamasada. Dahil po yung mga ano, pama, kinikita, kulang pa sa panggas. Ang kahilingan namin, uh, yun nga sana, yung kanyang pangako, ay eh, matutupad na. Yes, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. During the election, President Bongbong Marcos Jr. promised to review the security of tenure bill or the anti-endo bill. During the election, President Bongbong Marcos Jr. promised to review the security of tenure bill or the anti-endo bill. Yung, yung contractualization na we tried to, we tried, that we tried to push and uh, despite the fact that it was uh, the president's uh, priority also so maybe we can go back to that and have a look and see uh, what uh, what were the stumbling blocks kung bakit binito ng presidente there are seasonal jobs in the country, according to PBBM, but the government should still provide workers' protection and proper benefits. The president believes that an ideal work environment for Filipinos could assist in boosting the country's economy. President Rodrigo Duterte vetoed the anti-endo bill in 2019 due to several provisions in the proposed law. 
with the new administration, Labor Secretary Bienvenido Laguesma has recommended to strengthen the ties between workers and employers. Sa pamamagitan ng pagkakaisa, pagtutulungan at unawa ng sektor na paglilingkuran ng Department of Labor and Employment, ang atin pong hanay ng manggagawa at ang kanilang pamilya, kasama din ang hanay ng mga namunguhunan, ay uh, magkaroon ng ikang ay working arrangement, uh, pagtatagpo ng mga kaisipan upang makabalangkas ng mga solusyon sa mga problema na nararayan na dati pa. Mm -hmm. Subalit ang nakita natin mukhang mas kailangan ng higit na atensyon, tutukan ng mga problema. Meanwhile, the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines supports President-elect Marcos's vision for workers. The group expressed hope that the president will have an open mind to understand the workers' pressure in the country, especially with the rising fuel and commodity prices. Sa tingin namin, yun ang isa, malaking suse o napaka-importanting suse na maintindihan niya yung kalagayan ng mga magagawa at makagawa siya base doon sa kanyang pagkakaunawa kung ano yung tamang uh, balanse na gagawin ang interest ng mga magagawa at ang interest ng mga negosyante. Apart from the contractualization issue, PBBM intends to review the four-day work week and improve worker situation during the pandemic. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Albay 2nd District Representative Joey Salceda mourns the death of former Camarines Sur Representative Rolando Andaya Jr. Salceda said in a statement that he is grieving the loss of a friend and longtime colleague, and he is also condoled with Andaya's children. The official also said Andaya's father was a mentor to Salceda. The passing of the former lawmaker was announced by his family on his official Facebook page and asked the public to grieve privately for their loss. His family has not yet confirmed the cause of his death. Andaya was Camarina Sur's first district representative from 1998 to 2006 and again from 2010 to 2019. He was also the secretary of the Department of Budget and Management under former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo's administration from 2006 to 2010. Russia's terror reign continues to rise as they make increasing progress in capturing Ukraine's southern regions. Paul Gachalian will give us the details live. Yes, Paul? Marielle, while Russian forces strive to complete control over Donbass, Ukraine remained defensive on Wednesday, maintaining control over Lysychansk and pushing the Russians south. Lysychansk is the only city in the Luhansk province left in the hands of Ukraine, so it has been designated as a target for the Russians to complete Donbass. According to Russia's President Vladimir Putin, by capturing Donbass, Donbass will be liberated and the people living there will be offered protection, guaranteeing Russia's security. Currently, Russia has taken over almost all of Luhansk and Donetsk, the two provinces in the Donbass region that speak Russian predominantly. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky announced in his nightly address that Ukraine men held captive by the Russians were able to return home. Еще одна оптимістична і дуже важлива новина. Повернули додому 144 українських воїна з російського полону. 59 бійців Нацгвардії, 30 військово-морських сил, 28 армія, 17 прикордонників, 9 тероборонівців, 1 поліцейський. Найстаршому зі звільнених 65 років. Наймолодшому – 19. Зокрема, додому повертається 95 захисників Азовстану. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Paul Gachalian, reporting live. Canada is willing to help mitigate Europe's energy crisis while the United States intends to supply more firepower to protect its NATO allies. Bianca Quijano reports. 
Canada has responded to the continuous shortages in oil and gas exports caused by the conflict between Russia and Ukraine by proposing to supply oil and gas to its European allies, such as Spain and Germany, from its east region. Germany and Canada talked about exporting liquefied natural gas to Europe to help with the region's energy crisis. Meanwhile, in Madrid, the United States met with world leaders to solidify its military presence throughout Europe in order to reinforce their defense of other NATO nations. To make its military presence felt, Canada has also partnered with Latvia and has been leading multinational battle groups comprising of 3,000 to 6,000 troops. Both Britain and Germany have used a similar approach to increase their military presence in the Baltic states. Bianca Quijano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. This year is set to be one of the largest wildfire seasons on a record for the state of Alaska in the United States. Maybe and Doug will tell us why live. Yes, Maeve, go ahead. Marielle, record-breaking wildfires in the U.S. state of Alaska continue to be fueled by a persistent and abnormally hot and dry weather. This year is the second warmest June for Alaska, with temperatures reaching greater than 60 degrees Fahrenheit every day this month. This heat is also being trapped by a heat dome or an area of high pressure. Climate scientist Brian Brett Schneider says about a million and a half acres burned so far this year. This is already 50 percent higher higher compared to a typical year for the entire fire season from the last week of May through to mid-August, where Alaska experiences a little over a million acres. Climate specialist Rick Thoman from the University of Alaska Fairbanks also stated that while temperatures remain above 60, the, the weather pattern will remain the same next week and fires will burn longer before the rain season starts in late July. Marielle, the region also had limited snow during winter, which caused quick snow melt and dry vegetation. This, plus the thunderstorms in late May, also caused lightning to spark wildfires across southwest Alaska. Lime Complex, the largest fire currently burning in the state, was ignited by a lightning and has now consumed more than 500,000 acres. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Mavian Dog, for that live report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Mariela Toza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. The private sector believes in President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s vision for a better life for Filipinos. Conception adds that the presidential inaugural address hit home with entrepreneurs. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. expressed his desire of bringing a better future for all Filipinos. His intention was conveyed through his inaugural address today. We all want peace in our land. You and your children want a good chance at a better life in a safer, more prosperous country. All that is within reach of a hard-working, warm and giving race. Your dreams are mine. Pangarap nyo ay pangarap ko. Go Negosha founder and former presidential advisor for entrepreneurship Joey Concepcion says he was extremely moved by the president's message to the Filipinos. Concepcion explains that he felt President Marcus's sincerity and determination to bring a better life for everyone. He also commented on how Marcus captured the country's collective desire for unity and promised a comprehensive, all-inclusive plan to build back better. With this, Concepcion says that micro, small, and medium enterprises are also prepared to put in the hard work for a future of plenty and sufficiency as the president envisions. He also agrees with the president saying that the sooner we start, the surer and quicker the prospect of achieving our goals for the future given the many challenges we are facing today. Concepcion also expresses support for the Marcus administration as it continues to manage the COVID-19 pandemic which will pave the way for the economic recovery. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. 
Former President Rodrigo Duterte went to a mall shortly after he stepped down from office at noon today. A photo of the former president went viral on social media where he was followed by a huge crowd who wanted to take a photo of him. Duterte was still wearing his barong, which he wore during his departure honors at the Calayaan grounds in Malacanang Palace. He no longer attended President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s oath-taking. Let us uh, give uh, all our support to the new administration. The former president will return to his hometown, Davao City, via commercial flight, where a festive welcome awaits. Our Kasang Bahai, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of Members Church of God International. And before we close, we will leave you with a word giving glory to God. From the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 13, it says, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of men for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme. And those are the reasons behind the news June 30, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harleen Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.